I read it twice immediately. It is absolutely fascinating. What he knew in 1916 would blow you away. And it's been over 100 years, and we're missing this information. Hey, it's Dr. Schmidt. So I want to go over a concept that I've been dealing with my whole career, and that has to do with bugs in the body from the collar up. And I'm going to go into some really good detail about this. And the reason why I'm saying this now is because about three weeks ago, I had a patient come to me, and he saw an interview with Dr. Mercola and a guy named Dr. Thomas Levy. So Dr. Thomas Levy is a retired cardiologist. He was only in cardiology for 20 years. And the reason why he left is because he figured out the cause of heart disease, and he wanted to address that instead of just cutting people open and treating their arteries as if it's plumbing. And the cause of heart disease is bacterial infection. And there was, he mentions a study, I'll put the link below for this interview, and it's still on YouTube, it's not been taken down. I'll put the link below, but in um, this interview, Dr. Thomas Levy talks about a study with 5,000 people, they had placking in their heart and arteries. And these, every single one of these 5,000 people, 100% of them had a bacterial origination of their placking. Heart disease is a bacterial infection. And 5,000 out of 5,000, the bacterial infection started in the mouth and it affected the heart. And this actually was discovered at University of Michigan to my understanding. I have a friend who uh, was living in the Northeast part of town for many years. Um, he moved out of state recently, but he had a neighbor that walked up to him in the backyard. They're chatting, they're friends. And the neighbor said, yeah, we're gonna make a big announcement and this announcement is that heart disease can be caused by bacteria from the mouth. And so then a few weeks later, they actually published that. In my career, back in 04, I learned about in, uh, bugs in the ears. And I've done several videos about this, where you put liquid herbals in your ears, and that cleans out the ears, the eustachian tubes, and this is a safe harbor for organisms. It's hard for the immune system to get there. Well, this is true too for teeth. And you can have a cavitation, which is an infection in your jaw, deep in your jaw, whether it's down here or up here, from, for example, a bad root canal. So root canal is completed, and yet not all the bacteria are gone. And they start to grow and thrive, and they start to replicate and they create their own pus and mucus and the cells are dividing and there's not much space for expansion. Like in your gut, if you're bloated, that means you have candida, for example, in your gut and it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But in your jaw, there's not that room for expansion. So the uh, bacteria or whatever the organism is, leaves. And it can only be a very short distance to the nearest capillary. We're talking like four microns away. Um, also too, the bacteria and the pus can get not only into the arteries, but also into the lymphatic system, or maybe just dripping down the back of your throat, causing uh, that feeling, that tickle in the back of the throat called post-nasal drip. It might make a uh, dry cough and nothing comes out, but th there's that tickle. So bugs from the collar up can cause a wide variety of problems lower in the body. So in my career, when treating ears, for example, I've had a number of situations disappear, including yeast in people's guts, including chronic UTIs, including uh, lung infections, bronchitis. I did a video about this years ago. I had a woman, she was on the double lung transplant list at the University of Michigan and when she came to see me, I found bugs in her ears. She treated her ears. And uh, within a year, she had lost like 60 pounds. She got rid of the oxygen that she had to carry around. Her horrible cough was gone. And she's walking circles in her house like this for exercise. And she was off the double, double lung transplant list because we fixed her ears. Imagine if they transplanted her lungs, put in new lungs, and yet she's still having this problem she would have had to have another lung transplant. So, so that's the ears. You can also have trouble with tonsils, adenoids. This is all lymphatic tissue. And not just with the jawline cavitations, but also 
cavities, abscesses in the soft palate or in the palate of the mouth up here. Um, you can have gingivitis and like no root canals, no cavitations, but yet the gums are infected. Pockets in the teeth, uh, sensitivity to toothbrushes, sensitivity to cold. When I had black mold poisoning back in 2016, if I pressed a toothbrush up, up against the upper right quadrant, the pain was horrific. And I went to the dentist and I usually don't go to the dentist. And he said, oh, look, your teeth are cracking. So he gave me a calcium paste to put on my teeth, a little tube like this for 25 bucks. I ended up using it twice and I threw it away because that's not getting to the cause. My, my teeth turned yellow. And that's, again, it's a bug. It's mold. It's the mycotoxins from mold. Um, it could be a virus. It could be a parasite. Um, I had a patient with a cyst up here behind his lip. And um, the doctors kept saying, oh, don't worry about it. It's just a cyst. Well, finally, a good dentist told him to get it cut off. So he went to the surgeon and they looked at the scan and they said, oh, yeah, you definitely got to get that cut off. When he got that cut out, his health completely changed for the better from head to toe. And his brain started working better. He was talking faster, thinking faster. And he was more lively and happier because he got that little tiny cyst taken off right there. So um, his previous situation had to do with mold. He had mold in his house, his mom's house, the family cottage up north in Michigan. He moved to an, an apartment and that had mold. He finally got a new building, a new apartment um, com uh, complex was built. So he got an apartment there. So we were dealing with mold this whole time. But when he got that cyst taken off, the change was immediately uh, seen and I, I could see it myself. So the patient that came to me three weeks ago had um, come upon this video with Dr. Mercola and Dr. Levy. And based on that, he was inspired to use a water pick and he put a recipe of water, salt, um, hydrogen peroxide, and then sodium bicarbonate or potassium bicarbonate. I'll put that recipe below. And this was given by Dr. Mercola during the uh, interview. And my patient started doing this two weeks later his gums had regrown. So reseeding gum lines, reseeding gums can be fixed in a matter of days or a couple weeks. And my patient experienced this specifically and Dr. Levy talks about it in the interview. So look at your teeth. If you have pockets, if they're reseeding, use the water pick with this recipe below and see what kind of good you can, you can get done. Now, in order to find a cavitation or infection in the jaw, you have to get a scan called a cavitat also known as a cone beam. This is a 3D x-ray that not every dentist has, not every university has. You gotta do a search online for the name of your town plus cone beam or Cavitat. This is the same technology, just two different companies, cone beam, Cavitat. That's the only way you can find a hidden infection in your gums. Now you may not have any pain, you may not have any symptoms at all, but yet this festering, infection that's this big around or even larger in your jaw causing arthritis causing heart disease causing cancer they've had uh, thermograms like a camera that picks up heat take a picture of a woman with breast cancer and there's a direct line from her infected tooth down her throat to her breast cancer that's how serious this is now i've had a number of people that i talked to on the phone it's easier for me to um, treat patients who are in the office because I can do the muscle testing biofeedback technique that I do. But on the phone, it's a little bit more difficult. We have to, I have to ask more questions and think more broadly. And in the last three weeks, I've had a couple of people on the phone who are struggling with their health. And I had to, I call them up. I said, let's take a step back. Let's talk about your teeth. And I have one gentleman who years ago had a bad infected root canal pulled out and the dentist, um, made a mistake because there were uh, two pieces of the root broke off and she got all concerned, called in another dentist from the other part of the building and they both agreed just to leave it in there. So they sealed it up and he can feel the bump in his gums where that dead infected tooth is sitting, um, rotting away, bacterial infection emanating from there, going all over the body. And um, the enormity of this little problem is it's actually bigger than what you can possibly imagine. If these infected teeth, roots, gums, gingivitis, cavities, abscesses in the mouth can cause 
100% of heart disease in that 5,000 person study. It can cause breast cancer. It can cause leukemias, blood cancers. This is a much bigger problem than we can imagine. Imagine all the children that die from blood cancers and during the autopsy, they don't look at the teeth. They don't find out how many infected teeth are there because kids can have infected teeth just like adults. Let me give you another story of a patient in our office. He was swishing with hydrogen peroxide and all of his arthritis went away. Now there are studies that show that the bacteria that come from the mouth can also cause cataracts, gallstones, kidney stones, and contribute to Alzheimer's. You may have heard of my story in a previous video where I had blown two parasites out of my nose. After that second parasite was blown out, I knew immediately that my dairy allergy that I've had since high school was gone. And I tested that by going to the local farmer down the road. I bought a pint of strawberry milk with all the sugar and all the pus and mucus that comes in milk and a, and a, a pint of cottage cheese and I ate it and I didn't have to blow my nose after that. So food allergies can be a problem and then chronic sinus pressure and pain and also chronic allergies, seasonal allergies. You think the problem is, is uh, some sort of a grass or a tree? No, it's a bug that's in your body. Now, I called a guy last week, a patient of mine, and he's been stuck with his health, and he's not quite 40 years old yet, and for most of his life, he had a high-carbohydrate diet. Well, in the last few years, he did, he's doing the carnivore diet, and with the carnivore diet, he got really, really bloated. But before that, with the high-carbohydrate diet, he had a constant runny nose. So last time we were on the phone, he's like lamenting. His diet is perfect. I put him on the parasite supplements. He didn't get rid of any parasites. I put him on the great, the best detox products, and he didn't have any reactions to that, but he's still suffering from bloating and digestive discomfort. And so I said to him, okay, look, with the things I've been learning in the last few weeks, let's talk about your mouth and teeth and infections, gingivitis, pockets. He says, I don't have any of that. I said, well, you know, if you use a water pick with hydrogen peroxide, salt, and sodium bicarbonate or potassium bicarbonate that can get rid of hidden infections in your mouth. He goes, I've been doing that with my toothbrush for a long time, that same exact recipe. And he uses charcoal on his teeth once a week. So his dental care is perfect. He's got no infections in his mouth. And I said to him, but there's gotta be something, a hidden infection not causing any fever that's reinfecting from above to below. Cause every time you swallow, you're swallowing an infection. It's getting into your stomach, causing the bloating. Because we've given him supplements where he's taking pills and it's, it goes straight down to here and it's not helping. There's a, there's a second, there's a cause behind it. And I said to him, think about your sinuses. Do you have any pain in your eyes, behind your eyes, your ears, your mastoid bones, um, anything hiding? And he said, I have a, a nose problem. When he was 15 years old, he took Accutane for acne and it dries up your mucous membranes, your epidermis, your skin. And ever since then, he's had a bloody nose, left nostril. He wakes up in the morning, takes a wet nap, digs in there and pulls out a little bit of red blood that had accumulated during the night. And I said to him, is it any other color sometimes? Is it yellow? Is it white? Is it green? He goes, yeah. Sometimes it's green. And I said, that's a bacterial infection in your nose. You've had it for 20 years. And it's, in, it's dropping down from here, constantly reinfecting your body. And I don't care how many antibiotics you take, antimicrobials you take by mouth, it's not gonna fix it. You gotta snort it. You use a neti pot, or there's a new device called a navage. And it nebulizes uh, water. You could put some herbs in there and breathe it in. I talked with another patient last week. He's had Lyme disease, chronic pain in his joints, uh, fatigue, and he had a bad tooth and it was removed a year ago or so. And when I, and I found um, candida right there in his mouth when I do this biofeedback technique that I do. And I said, okay, you're gonna treat that topically, but tell me if there, is there any other problem, a sinus issue, ear congestion, itchy ears, drainage from your ears, Constant runny nose, like, tell me more. Any other symptoms from the collar up? And he says to me, well, he wakes up in the morning and oftentimes he'll have 
in the right nostril up here, a congestion, and he pulls it out, he blows it out, it comes out, and I said, what color is it? And he said, it's whitish gray. And I said, that is candida. You've had a multi-year candida infection in your nose, and it's causing this dripping down your throat, reinfecting your body. And that's the whole mechanism here, is that from the, from the neck up, from the collar up, there's bugs that live, and they cause harm throughout the rest of the body. Here's a book, a very small booklet, and this is called The Pathology of Dental Infections and Its Relation to General Diseases by Weston A. Price. Now, you may have known about Weston A. Price from his most popular book. He became internationally famous from nutrition and physical degeneration. He traveled the world in the 1930s. He looked at 134 indigenous tribes, looked at their diet and their traditional diets, and he compared um, the people of the tribe versus the people that left the tribe and started eating foods of modern commerce and the degradation of their health and their teeth were falling out and the infections here. And he was internationally famous for that. But before that, he was the president of the American Dental Association. This is a lecture that he gave in Toronto in 1916 to oral surgeons. And this book, I read it twice immediately. It is absolutely fascinating. What he knew in 1916 would blow you away with the things I'm saying. And it's been over 100 years, and we're missing this information. Doctors across the country are not asking you about your teeth. He is begging his audience to think like a medical man and a dentist at the same time. He said in, the, in this first page, he goes, I'm looking for a dozen men who can think like a medical man and a dentist, or a dentist and a medical man, like either way, whether you're a medical doctor, look at the teeth. If you're a dentist, look at the rest of the body and look for those infections that are here causing problems elsewhere, such as full body arthritis or, or whatever, or even local arthritis. He says in 1916 at this audience that one year earlier, he was in a lecture at an audience of, of Dr. Mayo. He heard Dr. Mayo speak. You've heard of the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, that Dr. Mayo. And that Dr. Mayo says, hey, look, we have plagues handled. Like the bubonic plague would never happen again, unless it's man-made. And he says, from now on, the scourge of man are focal infections causing systemic problems, and 90% of those focal infections are going to be from the collar up. This was 1915 when Dr. Mayo said that to an audience and Dr. Price was in the audience. Um, so Dr. Price, what was special about him as a dentist, he had an x-ray machine. Not many people had that. So he started scan, you know, testing people with the x-ray machine, finding infections, pulling them out, and seeing these phenomenal results. And he went to a clinic that he visited. They did not have an x-ray machine. And they just started pulling teeth. Per patient, they pulled an average of 12 teeth trying to get to the infection. And there were a, a three to four of those teeth were infected. So that, there's that, but now we have x-rays. Now we have the cavitat, we have the cone beam. You gotta get the 3D x-ray. So Dr. Price then also told a story about a woman, she had impacted teeth, two in a row, and she was very violent. She was in the psychiatric ward for two years. They actually made a plaster cast of her waist up and they locked her in so she couldn't move her arms because she was so violent. He found impacted teeth, pulled them out, and two weeks later, she was released from the psych ward and she started studying opera. This was 1908. She studied opera and, and performed for eight years and when Dr. Price told this story in 1916. So I'm going to read from this book. And at the climax of Dr. Mayo's lecture, this is what he said. The great mass of people today would not die of one of these plagues from the past. They would die of a simple infection that 90 out of every 100 probably would die because of some simple infection, the result of a focal infection, which focus itself would give them no trouble. He then re referred to the fact that 90% of the lesions are above the collar. And of those above the collar, which would include the tonsils, the antrum, the nasal passages, and sinuses that for the largest part come from dental infections, oral infections, and then accepted the challenge of the dental profession that they are going to take the responsibility. 
are you going to do it, brothers? And then Dr. Price says, recently I've been corresponding with the deans of the universities of the dental colleges of the country, the editors of the best journals and advertisers in our dental journals to find if we cannot get one dozen or even one half dozen men who are co competent to go into the department research to determine the relation of mouth infections to systemic infections. How do you suppose we could find, how many do you suppose we could find? I am ashamed to let you know. There are a few good men who are doing research work, but we cannot pry them loose from where they are. But alas, the tragedy is we haven't men in the world today. We haven't enough to even do 1% of the work that is demanded right now in interpreting the relation of mouth infections to systemic infections and vice versa. Now later there was a dentist that came along named Dr. Hal Huggins and he took on this responsibility and from him came a group of dentists called Biological Dentists. And you go to the website www.iaomt.org. So a few more stories to wrap this video up. I have a patient, she had a chronic um, leg infection. Her skin was infected with staph and her dermatologist gave her antibiotics, which she very much needed. She was on them for a couple months, cleaned up her skin. Then the dermatologist said, that bacteria came from your nose. So the, so the dermatologist gave her a topical antibiotic just to put in to her nasal passages. So that got me thinking too, like, okay, something here can cause wild symptoms like a staph infection in the legs. Product called NanoBac TX. I've been selling this for a number of years. The purpose of NanoBac TX is to break through calcium placking or old biofilm and get into it and then wipe out the organism that's in there. And you can read this book called The Calcium Bomb. And one of my patients took the supplement that is uh, mentioned, um, the precursor of the supplement was mentioned in this book. And what happened was her teeth became clean. The placking went away. Placking is a sign of excess bacteria or oral dysbiosis in the mouth. So if you have easy placking on your teeth, that is a systemic problem. And a product like NanoBacTX might be a solution for you. You could also try the water pick with the hydrogen peroxide, sodium bicarbonate, and salt. And that could be a really good solution for you too. But this could be the origins of chronic problems like heart disease, you know, placking. And this Nanobac TX product was designed to get rid of the nanobacteria that are in the arteries that cause placking. So keep in mind, this is a whole new uh, viewpoint that I have. 100% of heart disease is an infection. And I just saw a woman today, she had a heart attack at the age of 45, and now she's 50 or 51, and she's done everything right, and her mouth is clean, she doesn't have um, bad oral health, but I found a virus in her right ear, which is causing a constant drainage down the back of her throat. That was just today. So I'm gonna have her put herbs in her ear, her right ear, to stop that drainage, to stop the chronic, the chron uh, chronic infection that's happening in her body. Now, I don't treat infections. I have to say that legally. I help the body um, support, it's, I help support the immune system and the immune system gets rid of these bad bugs. I need to mention a Dr. Kerry Medej. I don't know if I can find the video and, and, and put it below for a link. And it, it was a segment on TikTok. And in this segment, she says that she was part of a study. And in the study, it was Pfizer trying to figure out if tetracycline would reverse heart disease if you think that heart disease is a bacterial infection. And sure enough, it did work. And the study was stopped early, and all the doctors who were participating were told, do not tell this to anybody because we can't have all the cardiologists lose their jobs. Now, why did they want to test to see if tetracycline would work? Because there's another antibiotic called minocycline, which works very well also. And it would be a lower dose, like 50 milligrams a day for 18 months. And that could pot potentially reverse heart disease. Uh, you got to go see a medical doctor for that. Don't tell your medical doctor you're listening to some chiropractor on YouTube. Don't mention my name. Um, if you wanted to, you can get the book. The book is called The Calcium Bomb. So you can get that book and hand it to your doctor and say, look, I got heart disease. I think that maybe we should look at this. Let me tell you the relationship of smoking and heart disease. So in this video, uh, I put the link below, Dr. Thomas Levy says, smokers have bad oral uh, dysbiosis, meaning the bacteria 
are not friendly, they're not happy. And also there's a deficiency of vitamin C, so the immune system is weak here. And so that's the main problem with smokers, even though they quit smoking 10 years ago, they never fix their mouth. They never clean up their diet. They never try to repair uh, the bad bugs and the oral dysbiosis in their mouth. And so they're always swallowing pathogenic bacteria. Now you can do a lab test. The name of the company is oraldnalabs.com. And they have a swish test. You just spit into it. You send it off to the lab. And they list off the good bacteria, the bad ones, and the neutral ones. And if you have pathogenic bacteria that are too high, that's a problem. Now, you can have no obvious gingivitis, no cavitations, no cavities, no pockets in your gums. The dentist is happy with your oral health. As a matter of fact, they're bored with it. They might want you to quit their practice because they don't make any money off of you. But if you, you can do this oral DNA swish test, and there's a bacteria there called, for example, there's a, a version of chlamydia that's known to cause heart disease. Or there's maybe some other bacteria in the mouth that's hiding between the gum and the tooth. And no dentist will find it, no x-ray will find it, but here it is causing a chronic problem. So in this book, The Calcium Bomb, they have a list of bacteria. Uh, cytomegalovirus um, could be hiding... Uh, somewhere in your body causing heart disease, Epstein-Barr virus, H. pylori, we know about that uh, regarding stomach, hepatitis A virus. Where do you think H. pylori, um, why is it so difficult to treat? Like people take antibiotics, it's supposed to kill H. pylori, it works sometimes, but not always. Well, if you have bad oral hygiene and you're eating junk food and you're smoking, for example, you're swallowing bad bugs. It goes in your stomach and then you get a peptic ulcer. Like, that's a problem. You can't just think stomach, stomach, stomach. You got to think mouth, too. So there's this whole list of bacteria, and this oral DNA test measures some of these bacteria. I think they measure 14, and it, it can determine whether or not um, it's a problem for you in your mouth, potentially causing systemic problems, and they do a correlation with scientific research how certain bacteria have an affinity to certain tissues. So certain bacteria go to the brain and they cause Alzheimer's. Other bacteria go to the gallstone and they cause gall, or they go to the gallbladder and they cause gallstones. Other bacteria go to the kidneys and cause kidney stones. And this was actually known in 1916. And Weston Price mentioned this in this book. Um, he talked about how if you have a bacteria in your mouth and it's causing an ulcer, you drink from a glass. Somebody else drinks from the same glass, gets that same bacteria in their mouth from you, 65% of the bacteria will end up in the stomach. And then they did another study, again, this is pre-1916, where if you have a bacteria causing a gallstone, and so it's ending up in the gallbladder, you share a glass with somebody else, 68% of that bacteria ends up in the gallbladder. So this is old information. One other thing I need to share with you regarding old information, this is about diet, it's all related. It was known in 1912, or 19, sorry, 1913, that a high carbohydrate diet feeds cancer. It doesn't, they didn't study at the time if it causes cancer, but they knew that cancer cells love high carbohydrates. And by the 1920s, they were bored with it. There's some researchers that just learned about it, you know, the seven-year-old or eight-year-old study from 1913. They're like, oh my God, look at this. A high-carb diet feeds cancer. And they started talking about it. And all the other researchers are like, oh, that's boring. We already knew that. So here it is 100 years later. And some people think that a high-carb diet is good for cancer. And they recommend fruit juicing or vegetable juicing or a macrobiotic diet, which is, you know, high grains. No, you got to stop that. So two more points to finish off. Number one, uh, during the 2020 pandemic, uh, people were wearing gloves and wearing masks to try to uh, remove themselves from the environment that might be scary. But also consider that inside your nose, it's still considered to be the environment. Inside your mouth, it's still the environment. And when you take in food, it's still the outside environment, even when it's in your stomach. Once that food passes through the intestinal wall, now it's inside the body. So just because you have food past the stomach, let's say three feet into the intestines, that bolus of food 
is not necessarily in the body technically. But once that food is broken down into small you know, protein chains, it goes through the intestinal wall, now it's in the body. So our epidemiologists are telling us to wear gloves and masks, but they're not telling us to spray things in our nose and to swish in our mouth to help the immune system. You could spray silver into your nose. You could swish with silver. You could do ozone water. You could do the hydrogen peroxide I mentioned, even salt, you know, the uh, salt water, neti pot. There's a lot of um, herbs and there's a lot of minerals that you could work with, such as silver or salt, and they can wipe out organisms. And I'm not claiming anything about that stupid virus because, the, you know, some government agency will maybe take down 13 more videos like they made me take down last year. But this is still, if I were to shove my finger up my nose, that is still the external vir environment. Now, I know of a family, three siblings, and the one oldest is the most unhealthy, and the middle one um, was moderately healthy, and the third one had a knee infection. And the person with the knee infection never took care of it and passed away from COVID. The person that is moderately healthy, okay healthy, um, got COVID and recovered. The person that was the least healthy never got COVID to this day, has never gotten COVID. Why? Because she's using external applications into her nose. She's nebulizing into her nose, I think it was hydrogen peroxide, and, and putting it in her mouth. So just doing that, even though you have Parkinson's and you're overweight and you have chronic, some sort of chronic disease, type 2 diabetes, whatever, putting stuff in your nose is very, very valuable because you're treating the external environment like I mentioned before. The last thing I need to say is that there are no supplement manufacturers that are allowed by the FDA to talk about taking their pills or their potions or their liquids into the nose or into the ears or swishing or even under the tongue. By FDA law, they can only say that, they can, that the uh, customer can put the supplement into their mouth and swallow it. So that is an FDA law and is, it is not being enforced. Now I can say it, but the manufacturer can't say it. So here I am telling you that all these manufacturers, they're probably biting their tongue and they want to scream from the mountaintops to snort their liquid, their multi-herbal combination, their silver or whatever into, into your nose, swish it in your mouth and do it on a daily basis. So since I'm not a manufacturer there, I just said it for them. Okay, I wanted to say all this information. This is the last three weeks of what I'm learning new. I learn this stuff because people tell me, they share videos with me and I really appreciate it. And because I'm in the free market, I don't take any insurance. I'm not like the doctors at the hospital. There are doctors at hospitals that have never cured a patient ever, but yet they still get paid and they get paid well. And by the time they retire, they got 10 million in the bank. And why would they care about getting somebody well other than a moral responsibility? I have the moral responsibility, but I also have the need to stay afloat in the free market with my business. I have to get you well. It's my job. And wh why would you pay somebody money if they can't get you well? Why would you even visit a doctor if they can't get you well? I just had a patient leave my practice. The guy was exposed to a very moldy place for 10 years. He lived in it and he worked in it for 10 years. He's crazy sick. I've talked to him twice on the phone. I found out today he's quitting my care because he's going to go see the medical doctors. And it's like, why would you go see them? They have no solutions at all for mold. They will give you antibiotics. They might give you antifungal for 10 days. But this patient, this former patient, has to detox for at least three and a half years like I did. Or maybe five years because it sounds like his situation is worse than mine. So yeah, go run to the hospital, tell them you lived in a moldy place, and good luck because they got no solutions for you whatsoever. Okay, thanks for listening to me rant on. It's been this amount of time. The sun has already set, um, but I had to get this off my chest. You know, this kind of information just builds up inside, and then I 
blurt it all out and then you receive it and I feel better. So thanks for helping me feel better by listening. Okay, see you at the next video.